Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and if there's one thing that can truly twist the coil of any hardcore film fan, it's when a movie concludes up without tying up a glaring plot hole or thread. It can eat away at you like a worm inside your brain as you question why that character did that, what happened to that thing that went into that place over there, who ate all of my Vitalites from the work fridge, hmm? However, much like in life, there are some questions we'll never get the answers to and simply have to learn to live with the air of what is just hanging over us like the ever-swaying sword of Damocles. Yet what if I were to tell you that some of these massive movie moments that were missing have actually been filled in through another medium? I'm talking, of course, about video games. And the titles on this list have, for better or worse, attempted to patch over these holes that we've been digging inside our brains. So, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games that resolved important movie plot points. Number 8. LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens We begin this list with a question that clearly, clearly has been dominating the Star Wars fanbase of late. No, it's not the issue of Rey's parentage, nor who originated the Chosen One prophecy in the first place. No, it's not even going to be what happened to the rest of Yoda's race, but it's the deep and brain-scratching conundrum of how C-3PO got his red arm that he sports so proudly in The Force Awakens. <gasps> I know. It's a big one. Joking aside, though, this is actually quite a heartfelt story that was explored in the game's DLC level, The Phantom Limb. The LEGO iteration of The Force Awakens actually contains several of these between the stages moments, even providing content that bridged The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens together and is considered canon. Yet this story concerning C-3PO's amber esque appendage is what we're focusing on today, as it is just brilliantly told. It showcases a bunch of droids attempting to survive this harsh environment of a strange world as the First Order has damaged a rebel ship. One of the survivors is C-3PO, and another one is OMR-1, a First Order droid who ends up sacrificing itself for our favorite shiny circuit board. OMR-1 allows itself to be corroded by acid rain and in the process gives its arm to C-3PO, who attaches it in memory of his fallen friend. It's actually quite touching, and also fills in this tiny little plot thread. Number 7. Enter the Matrix The Matrix is a wonderfully batty franchise, isn't it? A mix of fantastic fighting spectacle and enough moments of self-indulgence that you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's fellating itself more often than not. Therefore, it's easy to come away from a viewing session with more questions than answers, and though this next game does offer a few solutions, it's definitely not able to sake the entire roster of brain teasers. However, Enter the Matrix tries its damnedest to make itself a near-essential piece to the Matrix puzzle, releasing alongside the second film and the Animatrix as a sort of trifecta of code-based confusion, and includes an hour of live-action footage, which is actually pretty astounding. The game manages not only to tell the stories of another central crew in the film, but also gives us some answers as to why Matrix Revolutions make such a big deal out of Sati, an exile who it turns out is given her freedom in exchange for the life of the Oracle. We learned that in Revelations, the Merovingian wanted to kill the Oracle because, I don't know, he's, he's French, I, I don't know why, boredom, maybe that's probably actually a better one. Either way, this transaction of Sati's life for the shell of the Oracle explains why there's a different actress in the third film. Unfortunately, this was actually a real-life incident of the original actress dying, but here in the game, which obviously came out before the third film, it's explained that the Oracle made a choice, and that choice was Sati's life. It gives the actor switch a bit more depth than was actually conveyed in the final film. Number 6. The Thing Now, I don't know if you were aware, but John Carpenter's The Thing is easily one of my favorite films and games, and say it with me, kids, of all time! That was a weird one, that one. There's something about the crippling mistrust and extreme body horror that just ticks my spreadsheet boxes, and it also provides one of the best unsolved questions ever, namely that, at the end of the film, who is actually an imitation? There have been so many theories posited on this, and we even had a go at solving it ourselves on our sister channel, That Film Theory, so if you want to check it out, if you've got the time, I would recommend that. But if you want to take your answer from the medium of a video game, then you need look no further than The Thing, a piece PC, Xbox, and PS2. In this fantastically realized title, you take up the mantle of Captain J.F. Blake, who is investigating the now-ruined Antarctica base from the first movie. Amongst the burning bodies, terrifying enemies, and bedraggled survivors, you come across a corpse of none other than Childs, who has succumbed to hypothermia. Yet, as you might notice, MacReady is missing. Oh, well, I'm sure he's just found a nice warm coat and a mug of cocoa, right? Well, wrong. As at the end of the game, who should turn out to be your helicopter pilot than MacReady? 
Oh dear, looks like an infection is about to get spread quicker than when your mum gets some gusset rot, doesn't it? And she's got to buy one, get ten free off her, so that is bloody speedy. Also, that's my one per list. Number 5. Ghostbusters The Video Game Okay, so hands up here, this technically isn't a movie plot thread that this game ties up, but instead a narrative that is so good that many consider it to be the actual third installment of the original movie series. And trust me, people have been calling for a third film for ages, one that sadly now will probably never come to pass what with the death of Harold Ramis and Bill Murray swearing off the project time and time again. Here though, in the 2009 game, we not only get a brilliant story which details haunted mansions rising out of seas of slime, possession by ethereal gods and just a damn fine game itself, but we also got a glimpse into aspects of the original films that weren't used for whatever reasons. For example, players can learn about the history of the librarian Ghost and even get to see Goza's originally intended final form in the guise of Ivo Shandor, a spectral figure in a business suit. Honestly, it's an absolute treasure trove of odds and ends and was made with such love and care that it's easily one of the best video games based on movies that you can buy. Number 4. The Warriors Oh me, oh my, it's one of the best games Rockstar has ever kicked out and a brilliant retelling of the cult classic big-time boppin' brawler, The Warriors. Honestly, this game is pure class, from toe to tail and provides hours of scrapping reminiscent of the Newcastle school systems. One of the best things about this title, besides its brilliant adaptation skills, is that while this main narrative plays out, you get to embark on side stories that actually flesh out the characters and their motives for joining up with the Warriors in the first place, ranging from a desire to join to help run the streets or simply because they are the best muscle in the business, each of these flashback missions gives weight and credibility to each of the main cast. However, it's Cleon's one that strikes the most memorable hit, as his flashback story details his betrayal at the hands of his former friend Virgil and how the Destroyers, his original outfit, turn their backs on him. When applied to the grander stage, this small tale makes you see the passion and the raw fury with which this war chief operated, and therefore makes it an even greater shame when he's cut down early on in the movie. Number 3. The Blair Witch Video Game If there's one thing that horror tales should always try to avoid, whatever their medium, is that they shouldn't lay bare the actual focal point of fear as it's the unknown quantity that makes something scary. I mean, if we were able to analyse a monster in full, how could it ever hope to be terrifying? Yet that doesn't stop us from trying to uncover the truth, such as our obsession with mortality and what lies beyond. And for anyone with even a passing interest in the cult classic Blair Witch films, the video games based on the series provide the player a ton of information about what's really going on. That's not to say that such happenings are simple, though, as what starts out as a classic haunted wood story escalates into time travel, with your playable character meeting the cast from the first film despite being from the 1940s, and the real culprit being a monster known as, and I'm going to get this wrong, the Hecatomics? The Hacer Hecatomics? It's weird. All that you need to know, though, is that it exists outside of time and space, and it's the thing that influenced all the other killings just because it wanted some violence to pass the time. It is utterly mental, but it does try to put some logic, or at least some background, in place for a horror film that arguably didn't need any of this. Ah well, we really appreciate the effort. Number 2. Chronicles of Riddick – Escape from Butcher Bay The Chronicles of Riddick wasn't a good film, but Pitch Black, however, was, and introduced us to the gravel-throated killer with all the skiller, Riddick, and his lovely pale eyes. In fact, it's this eye shine which is one of Riddick's most useful skills, as it allows him to see in next to no light, meaning that he's more than happy to lurk in the shadows, waiting for his chance to strike. Just like Josh Brown. And while the prequel film posits that he got his eyes through a surgical operation, it turns out that things were a little bit messed up in Riddick's head as Escape from Butcher Bay paints things in a different light. In this phenomenal stealth title, we found out that the eye shine is actually a dormant attribute of his race, the Furians, and hey, I didn't come up with the names for that, and therefore any presumption we had on Riddick just fancying a bit of vanity surgery goes out of the window. It's a small change but actually fits much better with his character, as it was a bit strange to be asked to believe that he willingly underwent surgery to make himself blind to, well, anything brighter than a dull light bulb. 
And number one, Saw the video game. If there's one thing that you can say about Danny Glover is that he is definitely too old for the shit that goes on in each of the Saw horror films. However, even he couldn't help but get mixed up in the madness of the first Saw movie which saw his character David tap on the hunt for Jigsaw in an effort to quell his horrifying games. Unfortunately for Tap, though, this led to an encounter with Zep, a red herring set up to make the audience think that he's actually the serial killer, and he ends up being shot and left for dead. Well, fear not, my lovely friends, because this is not the last that you'll see of old Danny the Manny, because he's actually the main protagonist of the first Saw video game, thereby answering the question as to what happens to him at the end of the film and allowing him to attempt to get some revenge on Jigsaw. Not that he actually does, as the canon ending sees him escape and then kill himself. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, at least the plot thread was resolved, right? Just not in a happy way. And there we go, those were eight video games that resolved important movie plot threads. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. But before you go, let's just have a little chat. I hope that you're doing well, genuinely. I hope that whatever you're attempting to get up to in your crazy lives is going well. And if not, that is okay. Because remember, kids, it is okay to fail because it's important that you tried. Trust me on that. A lot of people put so much focus on success that they don't actually give credit to when people actually are just struggling to get through and do things that other people might find easy. But you know what? I'm paying respect to you right now. Whatever you do, I hope you do it as well as you possibly can. And if you want to chat more about video games, wrestlings, films, and every other thing that I do on this channel and company, then you can chat to me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. As always, I've been Jules. You you have been awesome and never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!